Phronesis, ancient Greek, phronesis translate. Phronesis is an ancient Greek word for a type of wisdom or intelligence. It is more specifically a type of wisdom relevant to practical action, implying both good judgment and excellence of character and habits, or practical virtue. Phronesis was a common topic of discussion in ancient Greek philosophy. The word was used in Greek philosophy, and such discussions are still influential today. In Aristotelian ethics, for example in the Nicomachean ethics, it is distinguished from other words for wisdom and intellectual virtues, such as episteme and techne. Because of its practical character, when it is not simply translated by words meaning wisdom or intelligence, it is often translated as practical wisdom, and sometimes more traditionally as prudence, from Latin prudentia. Thomas McEvely has proposed that the best translation is mindfulness. Topic. Socratic philosophy Topic. Plato In some of his dialogues, Plato showed his teacher Socrates proposing that having phronesis is the same as being a virtuous person. By thinking with phronesis, a person has virtue. Therefore, all virtuousness is a form of phronesis. In the mind of Socrates phronesis equals virtue, they are the same thing. Being good, is to be an intelligent or reasonable person with intelligent and reasonable thoughts. Phronesis allows a person to have moral or ethical strength. In Plato's Meno, Socrates explains how phronesis, a quality synonymous with moral understanding, is the most important attribute to learn, although it cannot be taught and is instead gained through the development of the understanding of one's own self. Topic. Aristotle In the sixth book of his Nicomachean Ethics, Plato's student and friend Aristotle famously distinguished between two intellectual virtues, Sophia wisdom and phronesis, and described the relationship between them and other intellectual virtues. Sophia is a combination of nous, the ability to discern reality, and episteme, a type of knowledge which is logically built up and teachable, and which is sometimes equated with science. This involves reasoning concerning universal truths. Phronesis involves not only the ability to decide how to achieve a certain end, but also the ability to reflect upon and determine good ends consistent with the aim of living well overall. Aristotle points out that although Sophia is higher and more serious than Phronesis, the highest pursuit of wisdom and happiness requires both, because Phronesis facilitates Sophia. He also associates Phronesis with political ability. Topic. Ethical According to Aristotle's theory of rhetoric, phronesis is one of the three types of appeal to character ethos. The other two are respectively appeals to arete virtue and eunoia goodwill. Gaining phronesis requires experience, according to Aristotle who wrote that Although the young may be experts in geometry and mathematics and similar branches of knowledge sophoi, we do not consider that a young man can have prudence phronimos. The reason is that prudence phronesis includes a knowledge of particular facts, and this is derived from experience, which a young man does not possess, for experience is the fruit of years. Phronesis is concerned with particulars, because it is concerned with how to act in particular situations. One can learn the principles of action, but applying them in the real world, in situations one could not have foreseen, requires experience of the world. For example, if one knows that one should be honest, one might act in certain situations in ways that cause pain and offense. Knowing how to apply honesty in balance with other considerations and in specific contexts requires experience. Aristotle holds that having phronesis is both necessary and sufficient for being virtuous, because phronesis is practical, it is impossible to be both frenetic and acratic, i.e., prudent persons cannot act against their better judgment. Topic. Modern discussion Topic. Heidegger In light of his fundamental ontology, Martin Heidegger interprets Aristotle in such a way that phronesis and practical philosophy as such is the original form of knowledge and thus primary to Sophia and theoretical philosophy. Heidegger interprets the Nicomachean ethics as an ontology of human existence. The practical philosophy of Aristotle is a guiding thread in his analysis of existence according to which facticity names our unique mode of being in the world. 
Through his existential analytic, Heidegger recognizes that Aristotelian phenomenology suggests three fundamental movements of life including poiesis, praxis, theoria and that these have three corresponding dispositions, teishni, phronesis and sophia. Heidegger considers these as modalities of being inherent in the structure of days and as being in the world that is situated within the context of concern and care. According to Heidegger phronesis in Aristotle's work discloses the right and proper way to be dasein. Heidegger sees phronesis as a mode of comportment in and toward the world, a way of orienting oneself and thus of caring seeing knowing and enabling a particular way of being concerned. While techni is a way of being concerned with things and principles of production and theoria a way of being concerned with eternal principles, phronesis is a way of being concerned with one's life qua action and with the lives of others and all particular circumstances as purview of praxis. Phronesis is a disposition or habit, which reveals the being of the action while deliberation is the mode of bringing about the disclosive appropriation of that action. In other words, deliberation is the way in which the frenetic nature of Dason's insight is made manifest. Phronesis is a form of circumspection, connected to conscience and resoluteness respectively being resolved in action of human existence as praxis. As such it discloses the concrete possibilities of being in a situation, as the starting point of meaningful action, processed with resolution, while facing the contingencies of life. However Heidegger's ontologization has been criticized as closing praxis within a horizon of solipsistic decision that deforms its political sense that is its practico-political configuration Volpe, 2007. In the social sciences In After Virtue, Alasdair MacIntyre called for a frenetic social science. He points out that for every prediction made by a social scientific theory there are usually counter-examples. Hence the unpredictability of human beings and human life requires a focus on practical experiences. See also Casuistry Common sense Dianoia Alain Vital News Rhetorical reason Topic. References Topic. Sources and further reading Aristotle, Nicomachean Ethics Trans. Terence Irwin 2nd edition, Hackett, 1999. ISBN 0-87220-464-2 Robert Bernasconi, Heidegger's Destruction of Phronesis. Southern Journal of Philosophy 28 Sup, 1989, 127-47. Clifford Geertz. Empowering Aristotle. Science, Vol. 293, July 6, 2001, p. 53. 1. Martin Heidegger, Plato's Sophist, Bloomington, Indiana University Press, 1997. Gerard J. Hughes, Aristotle on Ethics, Routledge, 2001. ISBN 0-415-22187-0 Alasdair MacIntyre, After Virtue, Duckworth, 1985. ISBN 0-7156-1663-3 William McNeil, The Glance of the Eye, Heidegger, Aristotle, and the Ends of Theory Albany, State University of New York Press, 1999. Ikijiro Nonaka, Managing Flow, A Process Theory of the Knowledge-Based Firm Palgrave Macmillan, New York, 2008. Amelie oxenberg Rorty, ed., Essays on Aristotle's Ethics University of California Press, 1980. ISBN 0-520-04041-4 Richard Sorab G. Aristotle on the Role of Intellect in Virtue Proceedings of the Aristotelian Society 74, 1973-1974, pp. 107-129. Reprinted in Rorty David Wiggins. Deliberation and Practical Reason. Proceedings of the Aristotelian Society 76, 1975-1976, pp. 29-51. Reprinted in Rorty Roberto Andorno. Do our moral judgments need to be guided by principles? Cambridge Quarterly of Healthcare Ethics 2012, 21, 4, 457 to 465. Topic: External links. 
The dictionary definition of phronesis at Wiktionary.